This is a zero alpha. A two are enemy armored vehicles on the northern and southern side of TRP4. More to follow. Wait. Uh, this is zero alpha. A task. A destroy. A gunfire. A three and three. A report when ready. A one one ready. Alpha ready. All call signs one one. This is zero alpha. A wait. A wait. A fire. Welcome back everyone, it's me Matt, really appreciate you being here. On today's video we are talking about infantry fighting vehicles, new ones that are up and coming for Australia. Now I'm always fascinated when it comes to IFVs for the main part that I have operated and served alongside them uh, with the British Army and of course we do know of the Ajax system which I will be doing a video on in the very near future here. But we're talking today about Australia's new infantry fighting vehicle, I guess bout or competition going on right now for the Land 400 Phase three project now if you're not aware of what the land 400 phase three project is is an australian contract bid for a 10 to 15 billion dollar program which will recapitalize in the army's vietnam era m113 armor personnel carrier completely replacing their force with a combination of tracked infantry fighting vehicles and tracked apcs now there were four main industry contenders each offering a different solution to the army's request or tender including bae uh, Hanwar Defense, General Dynamics, Land Systems, and Ren Metal. The BAE CV-90, the Hanwar Systems Defense AS-21 Redback, the General Dynamics Land Systems Ajax. <coughs> Sorry, I got a little uh, tickle in the throat there when I said that word. And uh, the Ryan Metal Lynx KF-41. So, out of all of those vehicles, uh, there is now only two contenders left. And interestingly enough, they are two of my favorite infantry fighting vehicles in the world. Not my favorite unfortunately no uh, but two of my favorite the two contenders are soon to be selected for the project are the kf-41 lynx and the hanwha defense australia redback program which are facing off in an extensive user evaluation field trials as we speak right now now recently they did conduct a firepower demonstration at pakai panyal military training area i think i hopefully said that correctly pucker Panyal, i think that's right uh, showcasing next level protection firepower and mobility now both companies have been delivering three prototype vehicles which are being tested over the course of this year as part of a two-year risk mitigation activity a decision on the preferred tender will be presented for the government for consideration now the land 400 trials uh, have been really really stringent i mean australia literally has got everything going for them when it comes to infantry fighting vehicle selection um I have to say they are right now in the world, other than I would say Germany, the benchmark in selecting a very capable infantry fighting vehicle that's going to last them a long time and suit their needs to a T. I have a huge respect for the Australian military right now and the Australian army for really putting these vehicles through their paces and selecting out of you know a whole host of options some of the best infantry fighting vehicles in the world and I'm hopefully going to see um, a reciprocation of comments and you know uh, I guess opinions in the comment section for this video because I think it's hard to say that these vehicles are not competitive and not capable of what they need to do. Uh, they really are incredible pieces of equipment. I do love the KF-41 and obviously the Lynx. The capabilities they have on them is just incredible. Uh, compared to what I'm used to with the Warrior Infantry Fighting Vehicle, uh, it's just 
a totally different pedigree. You can't compare uh, the technology, the firepower, the mobility, the armor protection, uh, the infantry dismount capability on these things is, is second to none. And you know I've done videos on these two vehicles, both the KF-41 and the Redback, but really they've been putting them through all sorts of different tactical scenarios in the field that push them to how realistic they'll probably be employed in the future. And at the demonstration itself, the vehicles were firing their 30mm guns, their coaxes, uh, the Mag 58 machine guns engaging targets between about 300 to more than 2,000 meters, uh, which is, you know, a very standard setup. They've also been basically blowing these vehicles up. Uh, the Capability Acquisition and Sustainment Group headquarters of the Armor Division, uh, Major General David Coghlan, said that the next generation protection suite of the 30mm cannon, the anti tank guided missiles, which is Spike, by the way, which is pretty much one of the best anti tank missiles out there, and the ability to engage helicopters and drones, either vehicle or will offer this 100% hands down. Uh, increased firepower mobility really is a push for Australia right now because unfortunately the M113 is a old school vehicle that has nowhere near, nowhere near the capabilities of what these vehicles do. Um, they're really approaching no, the end of the risk mitigation activities now and they're looking for the shortlisted tenders. So it's getting tight. These two competitors are really going at it and it's cool. This is the coolest armored fighting vehicle news out there right now in my eyes. We are literally talking about the next generation of future armored fighting vehicles of today, and, and they really are second to none. Uh, each vehicle does have a crew of three and can carry six fully armed infantry soldiers into battle. The vehicles are designed to be very much so fighting alongside the Australian military's current tank fleet, which is the Abrams, uh, which you know allows that mobility and agility to be very, very upfront because the M113s, they just can't catch up. They've been around since the 1960s. There's no way they can keep going. Now, they've performed and served the army for Australia very, very well for many decades, but it's time to put them to the side. Uh, the best thing about the infantry fighting vehicle is to allow the infantry to contribute more towards joint land combat, and that's why Land 400 has been so stringent and tight is the infantry need a weapons platform they can really utilize, and, and they're going to put a lot of money into this, okay? Uh, and a lot of vehicles are coming out of this, right? A lot of vehicles. Uh, it's valued between about 18.1 billion to 27.1 billion for the Land 400 Phase 3 project, which is the largest acquisition project in the Army's history, which is incredible. Now, both companies, should they be successful, have committed to building the majority of the vehicles in Australia, which for me is, is amazing. Uh, you know, I do have a very, very close friend of mine, uh, Sheldrake, who, who, you know, lives in Australia, was a gunner himself uh, in the artillery, obviously not armoured or infantry, but he gets excited when we talk about this too and, and we don't talk enough about the australian military on this channel i really do feel like though australia is going to be the tip of the spear in the world when it comes to futuristic infantry fighting vehicle capability there's these two vehicles really do set the standard for high level capability infantry fighting vehicles now i will talk more about the cv90 and videos of the future but this is really good for australia it's really good for their military i'm sure the infantry are kind of chomping at the bit to get in there there's a lot of logistical and technical details to be ironed out of course uh, we're going from you know a completely different weapons platform you're gonna need to train drivers train crew members to work on these things it's going to take time and a lot of infrastructure and you know push for training to get these things working and operational but this is game changer I i'm really really excited i love the fact that australia is pushing this and have put so much effort into it i'm sure it's not been a, a smooth road it's been a rocky road to get going but really good news anyway i hope you're excited too more details i'm sure to follow and we'll see what comes from it but uh I'm sure it will be a bitter fight to the end for these two defense contractors, but uh, I am really pumped to see what comes out the other end. If you want to go check out the specific videos of these two vehicles, you can go check them out on my video. Check the description box below to see the review of the vehicles in person up front, uh, giving more technical details. But that's it for today. If you did enjoy today's video, please leave me a like and hit that subscribe button or bell to be notified of upcoming videos in the future. Those of you who have been supporting my Patreon and PayPal in the description box below, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. I hope to see you on the next video. All the best. Bye-bye.